It's 20 past 8. Well, as a parent, it is natural to want to protect your kids. But how far should you go? Well, one father in the UK has been charged after he allegedly shamed his son's bullies online. Yeah, the man used a website to name several children. He claimed bullied and beat his son. So did he do the right thing? Or does this sort of behaviour just create more problems? And is it legal to do it? Joining us are Sunrise Parenting Expert, Dr Michael Carr Greek, and Joe Catanzariti from the Law Society. Good morning to you both, gents. Michael, what do you reckon? Did the father handle this situation correctly? No, but I can understand where he was coming from. It's a terrible thing to have your kid bullied. What he should have done is gone to the school authorities. If they didn't take appropriate action, he should then have gone to the police, in my view. Naming and shaming doesn't work, has never worked and will never work. So legally, Joe, has this father created more problems for himself then? Yes, potentially the father's created quite a series of problems. He could be potentially sued for defamation if there are untruths being put out there. Also, if kids start what getting... What if they're true? Sorry. If they're true, you? yeah, it still wouldn't matter because he's in, he, truth is only a limited defence. Here he may be ending up in inciting other activities that might happen. Okay. What happens if a group of kids reacts to that and goes out and starts beating up these kids? Mm. Right? You can, all, you can get other criminal activities because he's part of the now... You know, assisting of crime. So it's a stupid thing for him to have done. Okay, all right. Um, Michael, what should parents do? Um, should you, because you talk about going to the school, that's fair enough, going to the authorities, should you ever go to the bully's parents and sort of knock on their door and very, you know, in a considered way say, hey, we've got a bit of a problem here and approach it that way? Well, I spoke to the National Centre Against Bullying in Australia yesterday about this, and their advice is definitely not. Uh, you don't have any objectivity. You probably are putting yourself at risk. You've got no idea what reaction you might get from the other parent, and it is much better to let the authorities deal with it. Uh, you simply do not have the objectivity that's required. So what else can you do, Michael, then? I guess just, I don't know, some, some sort of advice for parents who are watching this morning, who've, who've done that, who've been to the school, they get no answers, their child is being bullied. I mean... You can understand this dad's frustration. Yeah, what do you do? Oh, look, of course. Um, well, what you have to do, first of all, is you have to listen to your kid very carefully in a non-judgmental way. You have to reassure them that they haven't done anything wrong. You have to always say to them that it's probably a reflection of the insecurities of other people, nothing to do with them. And then what you have to do is be proactive. So if you don't get the response you want from the school, you go right up the school hierarchy. If you don't get any satisfaction there, I would write to the Minister of Education in your state or territory, and if you don't get any satisfaction there, then ring your local talkback radio station. You have to take a stand. Remember, schools have a legal responsibility to provide your child with a safe environment in which to learn. Joe, you were talking about the bullies here, and, and uh, they need to be protected by the law, or the law protects them. What about the victim in this case? What are his legal rights? Well, the victim can... Uh, there's, the school's got to provide a safe system. Right. The victim can obviously sue the parents of the child if they're doing things. The victim can sue the kids. But more importantly, uh, and easily, I guess, the victim can actually sue the schools if they're not following through on the protection of the kids. Right? And there are steps in place. The kid can say, I'm getting psychological damage. It's a question of proof, obviously, and it's, yeah. it's a high legal test. But we have got examples of people going to work, covering the regulatory authorities, coming into the workplace, coming into the mm. schools and saying, you've got to have the safe system, mm. you've got to have the health in place of the kids. Yep. saw a case quite recently, didn't we, where, yeah. where yeah, that yeah. happened? But, Michael, is there sort of a... Do we need an independent tribunal on bullying as part of the education department where parents can go and know that they're going to get listened to, that situations are mediated? I think that's a great idea, Koshi. Uh, a lot of parents are very frustrated because they feel that they're not being listened to, mm. they're not being heard, and that probably is why this bloke did what he did, albeit unwise. So I think that's something that we should think about. I actually called for a Royal Commission into uh, bullying across Australia uh, about three weeks ago because uh, Julia Gillard released the research that said one in four kids in schools in Australia are now being bullied. That was one in six in 2000. Goodness gracious, whatever we're doing doesn't seem to be working. Mm. Yeah. All right, Michael, thank you so much for your time, as always. Pleasure. Joe, thanks for coming thank in. You. Really appreciate it.